An unruly dog with bathroom issues is making a mom crazy, but Pet Trainer 911 is on the case. The amazing story of Sammy the Siamese cat who saved his family from a fire. Plus, want to take great pictures of your pets? We've got the country's best pet photographer. All this and how to care for your new kitten, this time on Animal Attractions. Hi, I'm Alex Boylan, and this is Buddy, and we both want to welcome you to Animal Attractions, the show about the deep affection people have for their pets. Today, we're going to meet the photographer to the stars and their pets and learn some secrets behind great pet pictures. And later, a truly remarkable story about a cat who literally saves its family from a fire. It's something you don't want to miss. But first, a family goes out, and you've heard this before, and just buys a puppy and now doesn't even have a clue what to do with it. You know what that means. A job for a pet trainer 911. Take a look. Meet Bella. She's just a kid, a four month old puppy. She doesn't know that biting is bad. She doesn't know that pooping in the bedroom is bad. Wait, scratch that, really bad. Bella doesn't know all these things. And she also doesn't know that she is missing out on a lot of family fun. She's just too wild. Bella is a wonderful dog. She is the beautiful, sweet, loving animal that I wanted. However, she is also the dog that I didn't want. She bites my children. She puts holes in their clothing. She jumps up on people. She goes to the bathroom on the floor inside. Mom, she did it again. I just can't take it anymore. It is difficult to keep her inside as the inside dog that we want our children to lay on and play with. So she basically lives in the, in the yard, in the backyard. Wow. I want the inside dog. Guys, settle down, please. You're getting Bella too hyped up. I, I did all the research and you know did the best that I could for that family dog, but I feel like we can't connect with her as a family because she spends all of her time outside and we spend all of our time inside. So I'd like to be able to eventually make that connection with her. And I'm afraid that it's getting too late because she's already four months old, so I just don't know what to do. Because Bella does live outside, um, she has become friends with many of our neighbors, and with that, we've had a few suggestions. Um, and we were given the name of Coach Ron White, who supposedly can just work miracles with animals, and that's what I need, a miracle worker. She thought that their dog would just grow up and be a good dog, have the puppy, and won't housebreak itself, and won't mouth on the kids like if the dog was a stuffed animal. She realized that the dog needed some attention, needed to be trained. If you don't train your puppy, he's only gonna do what he knows how to do. A dog thing, tear up, don't gotta listen. He's just, he's a nightmare. He, he, you ain't showed him anything. There's no structure. He's just a, doing what a dog will do. Hi. Ronald White. Hi, Ron, Nicole. Glad you could make okay. it. Come on in. Bella. Coach White, this is Bella. Oh, okay. This is where beautiful. she... Beautiful. Thank you. Classy. Well, yes. <laughs> I think so. This is where Bella lives, pretty much. When she's not out in the yard, this is her home. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you have the list that we had you to make up? I do. This is all of Bella's, well, not all, but Bella's main bad behavior. Okay. I have a list for you, too. Right. For your dog. Okay. Uh, some things you need to get at the store. When Coach White okay. came over uh, that same day, he gave me a list of items that we needed to pick up for Bella so we could be prepared when she arrived home. Things like a plexiglass for the wall where she was going to be anchored to her own room. 
um, a bed so she could be sent to time out and have her own space in our family room and a stuffed animal primarily so we could teach our youngest Hannah how to touch a dog softly how not to pull on her ears and her tail and just treat her very gently when I spoke with coach and he said that he would be picking Bella up later that day that same day I felt a huge sense of relief as a mother of three I did not have time to train this dog on my own and that's where a lot of my frustration lied and he was coming to take care of it for me I took the dog home to give everybody a break because the wife was fed up, the husband, the kids didn't know what to do with the dog. So I took the dog home for a week and gave the dog a little bit of structure and did what I can do for the family for when he comes home. Well, when I first brought him to boot camp, I put him in a crate because he come from a crate. And then eventually he'd be tethered down and he'd get used to being tied up. It's actually a plastic uh, cable and uh, it's a little uh, hook that goes into the base of your wood, and then you get your piece of plexiglass. It's just plastic, it's clear, and you put it over it for the dog won't scratch and he won't eat through your drywall. And uh, it's, it's, it's pretty good. Any dog can be housebroken in five days. It's being consistent of what you do. What the dog can't get, he can't put out. You leave his food down all day, he's gonna eat all day, and he's gonna do it because you're gone. But once he's housebroken in that week, putting him on a schedule, then you can leave the food and water down because he knows how to hold it until you come home. So what we do, we uh, tie the dog up in the house and we let him eat and drink, but he uses the bathroom the first time in the house. I take his number two and I set it down. And when I, he looks at it, he tries to get away from him and I'll tell him, bad dog. Bad dog, bad dog, bad dog. Come on, let's go outside. I wanted him to know that it's bad dog used the bathroom in the house then take it outside and he'll smell it and he'll use the bathroom. He'll get the message and then that's when I reward him. And then when he goes outside and uses the bathroom, I praise him for using the bathroom outside. There's a good a dog good outside, that's bad good, dog in the house. Then once he's housebroken, I don't need to that's say a, a bad dog girl. anymore. Everything is good, everything is love. The kids were jumping on it, they were too much for the dog. And so the dog would mouth on them to get away. So when I took him home, I would take and let my son play with him and the pet and love on him. And when he would mouth my son, he, my son would give him something to put in his mouth to stop him from mouthing on him. And then when we took him back home, we showed the kids how to handle and when he mouths them to put something in his mouth that he can chew on, something safe. When Coach White dropped Bella back off, he let us know that we have a laundry list of our own items that we need to work on as a family. Well, everybody in the family needs some training, from the three-year-old to the mom and the dad. They all need to be trained for everybody to be on the same page with the dog. Coach White has made the potty training so simple. He has asked us what portion of our yard we want her to be going to the bathroom in, which is great because it still allows the majority of my yard to stay very clean for my children to play in, and Bella does her business in her area, and it's been so simple. When I brought Bella home, uh, we, we all sat down to go over the rules with this dog. So what we're going to talk about is uh, housebreaking, and everybody needs to know how to uh, Housebreak the dog. Whoever is up first in the morning takes the dog out. Take the dog out, fasten him, bring him back in, give him food and water. Uh, no playing with him in the house like throwing the ball or the kids running through the house, he's chasing them. You would actually go outside and let the dog do all that. Run and chase the kids, play with them, play with the balls. And then in the house, it has to be calm. No running around, no jumping on the furniture. No teasing the dog, it's just petting him and loving him, sitting there watching TV with him, brushing him, and he'll know the difference. He'll know there's playtime outside and there's structure in the house and love. Deal. Deal. There you go. Place. So keep walking The back. week Bella was gone, um, it was as peaceful as my house could possibly be with, with three children, more peaceful than it has been um, in the last couple of months. So it was nice. Um, we've missed her. 
but when she came home, it was fantastic. She seemed like a completely different dog. She didn't jump on myself. She didn't jump on the children. She wasn't pulling down my kitchen towels the moment that she walked through my kitchen, and it's just been wonderful. If you don't train your puppy, oh, he's gonna be a problem dog. Give your dog some love and structure, and you'll see you have a great dog. Be patient with him, don't stop. Just keep uh, working with the dog. Just keep telling him what to do. If you give up, stop telling him what to do, he's gonna stop doing it. Keep training. Although I realize that Bella is only four months old, this has been extremely encouraging to me. This is not as difficult as I thought it was gonna be. It's been very simple, and Bella is finally, officially a part of our family. We have our inside dog. Karen Will Rogers and Laura Lacey are famous for creating a portrait book of celebrities and their pets. Karen's gift is creating memorable photographs of people and their pets. And Laura is a talented writer. They're the team to call for great photos of you and your pet. And today, they're going to share with us their do's and don'ts for taking award-winning, star-quality photos of our own pets. I think when you really take the time to set up a portrait, it's just one of those moments that you're making, you know, within this relationship with your animal that will last forever. It's a moment in time that you stopped to say, I love this animal. I love this little thing in my life, or this big thing, whatever the animal is. It's something that you have to do as a pet owner. Not only is it worth the time, it's worth the energy and all the love that you put into it in the moment, and it means that much more 10 years later. Every pet deserves star treatment. To me, they're all stars, and they're all stars in our lives, your lives, and to capture them and preserve them is one of the greatest things you could do, and, and it's a treasure. Animals are like little people and they have their own idea of tones that affect them and make them respond. And that is a big key in taking a great picture. All right, bring in that next dog. Come on, buddy. Hey, come here, babe. Come here. Good, Good boy. boy. OK. Good boy. Now, you want me to do something kind of playful with him, Karen? Why don't you stand behind the chair okay. and lean in, and we're going to get a shot. You kind of lean over the chair, kind of like, come here. Whoop. Yeah, you, you lean in like this. Okay. All right, you guys, that looks great. Now, I'm going to move over here so he won't. Oh, that's beautiful. There. Real quick, you sit on the arm. You sit on the edge in there, and you lean in with him. Okay. Yeah, just sort of lean over, hug on him. Hug that boy. Good boy. That's a very good star. Look towards this light tail a little bit more. Okay. Oh, that's great. Puppy dog. If you're photographing a big dog, what you could do is lower yourself to the dog. Sometimes if you go in and give him a hug, that's really a nice thing too. And it brings your face closer together. And um, that works really well. And sometimes it's good if it's a really tall dog, get him to stand on his hind legs and you can put the paws on your chest. And then he, both of you are looking at the camera and then you make a squeaky noise or whoever's taking the picture and you get great ear action, big twinkle in the eyes. We have so much fun with the props. It's so much fun to dress up dogs. Very good boy. And keep that on oh. for about one minute, maybe oh. less. Oh, there we go. Oh, He's a very good tree. boy. Oh, that's Ooh. great. Beautiful. Karen, <laughs> call him. Oh, Nelson, Nelson. Stay, 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 stay. Oh, that's a good boy. Okay. That's good stay. right there. Would you go boy? Stay. Good boy. Oh, that's cute. Oh, that's great. I buy these whistles that make animal noises from a sporting goods store. Nelson's dog! Who's a good boy? Oh, that's beautiful. Nelson. Great. Nelson! <laughs> They're great because the animals love the sound of a squirrel or a moose or a deer. Um, and that gets their ears going up and their eyes, and they love it. Some of the dogs, it's funny, the older dogs are a little more hip to it. They're like, they look at me like, that is fake, and I know it. And then sometimes you've got to use cue words, like, you want to go in the car? You want a treat? Who's your daddy? That's cute. Good. Good. Good boy. Beautiful. Oh, Nelson. You're the best. 
best. She's a good bellowing. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a big bark. <laughs> now he wants my whistle. As for a location when you're shooting your pet, what's really great is to put them somewhere where they're comfortable and safe. Um, for example, if you don't want them sitting on the couch, you know, don't get them on the couch and try to photograph them there. I like to put my dog sometimes in the front seat of the car and I have them, it gets them positioned in there and they can't move and I get some great smiles that way with their heads sticking out of the car door. It's so much fun to dress up dogs, our dogs, you know, our friends' dogs for the holidays and whether it's, you know, turkey feathers or Christmas with wonderful Santa hats and we even have a wedding gown and a groom's, you know, suit. And it's so much fun to, to put these animals in these costumes because they take on a whole nother personality and they can really work it. It's really fun. It's really fun to see them sort of transform and then get hammy and pose for the camera. It's great. Take portraits of these animals. Take pictures because they are family members. They are a part of your family. And to have these photos is just like taking pictures of your children. And if you don't have children, they are your children. So do it. It's fun. And it's just so great. You can slap them all over your refrigerator or frame them, whatever you'd like to do. But that makes your house just a little bit more of a home. Three, four, five. Ah, county sheep is so relaxing. For me, it means it's time for a nap. But for this breed, counting sheep is strictly business. Today, we're meeting the ultimate blue collar dog. And I'm not just talking about his neckwear, I'm talking about his work ethic. This is a border collie. What kind of jobs will he do? Well, herding and driving sheep are number one on this breed's resume. But he'll herd anything from sheep to ducks to kids. That's all they want to do is, is work from uh, when they get up in the morning until they go to bed at night. In fact, if my dogs go two or three days without work and they start getting kind of crazy and, and uh, have a cabin fever sort of thing. Not only does he love to learn obedience and agility, this breed takes quickly to search and rescue, narcotics and bomb detection, plus can make an excellent guide dog. He even excels at Frisbee competitions, anything to make him feel useful. The Border Collie is, is similar to the postman, uh, come rain, snow, sleet, or hail, they're gonna do their job. And they, they could care less whether it's raining or whether it's sleeting or whether it's snowing or whether the sun's out. Uh, you just got to adapt to their environment because they're gonna get out there and do their thing and you gotta get out there and do it with them. Border Collies like Kate are renowned for their supremely high intelligence, strong work ethic, and very high energy level. Border Collies can be prone to certain eye and hip problems, so you're going to want to investigate the breeding line thoroughly before adopting one of these. As you can see, Kate's not very happy about being inside. She was bred to be a working dog, and she'd much rather be in the field herding sheep. The Border Collie is built to work. They make quick turns, they move fast, they think fast. Their gait should be a smooth one so that they can move and they can make their turns. Um, if they're constructed right, they have no problem working all day long, all day. You need to take them to the park and throw the frisbee to them, uh, take them on a, a, a run with them, do uh, dog agility. But besides the exercise, they need the mental stimulation of having something to do. A bored, mishandled border collie can get into terrible trouble and, and be incredibly destructive. If they want to get out, they're going to figure out a way to do it. They'll even learn how to open uh, gates, to turn door doorknobs. Border collies are generally very people friendly and they're also uh, uh, very eager to uh, please their, their masters. We enjoy our dogs and they are very much worth all the effort that we have to put into them. Uh, we get back much more than what we put out, I feel. Uh, we really love our dogs. So if you're looking for an athletic partner with limitless enthusiasm, who will work long and hard just to make you happy, then consider the Border Collie, the down-to-business dog you can count on. When you bring a new kitten into your household, it is important to be prepared. It's very important that you know where you want to place the litter box, and it's also important to go ahead and purchase kitten food 
as well as having toys available in the house. So the transition to the new environment is as easy as possible on your new kitten. Cats inherently like to be clean, so it's important that we place their litter box in an area that's easily accessible to them, as well as in a place where we can clean it once a day as needed. When cats are young, it's important to get them used to being groomed. Cats actually love to be clean and groomed on a daily basis, and it's a part of the way that we show them that we love them. Kitties like to keep their claws clean, so it's important to provide an area where they can claw routinely, and this will help prevent them from clawing areas or things that you don't want destroyed. As kittens are introduced to your household, it is important to provide them opportunities for play. Cats are very active, especially young kittens. As we interact and socialize with them, they actually bond with us as a part of their normal play. Once kittens are weaned and you bring them into a new household, it's good to work with your veterinarian and make sure that you provide proper nutrition. Kittens are in a rapidly growing phase. They require more protein, more calories than adult cats. As such, it is key to work with your veterinarian in determining the right nutrition for your growing kitten. A story like this comes around maybe once in a lifetime. A cat saves its family from a fire. It's an awesome story. Here, take a look. My first foster home I went into when I was about one, and then I went around to about 20 or 30 more. Probably one of my favorites was one that had a cat, and so I got to help take care of the cat, and I actually got to see it give birth to kittens, and I really wanted one, they were so cute, and that's when I first decided that I wanted a pet of my own. We fell in love with Kate when we first met her. She was so beautiful and so wonderful, and she fit in our family so well. And it was just love at first sight. We really were excited about her continuing and being with us and, and having our families whole. Well, one of the first things we noticed right away was her affection for cats, kitties, any kind, it just didn't matter. And of course she had never had one, even though we had one in the family, she had never had one of her own. So the first weekend she was here, that was our objective is to go get a cat. The day that we first got Sammy, I knew what I wanted. I wanted a girl, I wanted to be cute and cuddly, and we looked and we looked and we couldn't find one. Finally, in like the fifth store, we found the perfect cat. It was a boy, not a girl, but still cute and cuddly, something that I could love, and that was mine. He had his own personality. Like when we met, it was just like we latched onto each other. He purred to me in a different way than he did with anyone else. It was, a very special friendship, and so I could like do anything with him. Sammy is a Siamese, half Siamese actually, you know, and half American short hair. One of our friends said anything with the Siamese mix was the best pet for a child. Mm -hmm. Sammy did so well with our family and with Kate. When Sammy was little, Katie would always cuddle and hold him, and Kate, Sammy was such a wonderful fit. I think having the cat was the real catalyst and it made her adjust to the family mm -hmm. right away. It was just uh, the, whole, the whole element of having the cat, the family, and a new experience was just fantastic. I was always the one taking care of Sammy. I fed him, I emptied his litter box, and so I had never really seen what cats did before. So I fed him from a bottle. I treated him more like a baby than a cat. And finally, when he was like one year old, he figured out the cats don't drink out of bottles. And he decided that he was too embarrassed to drink out of a bottle anymore, and he stopped just like that. If I didn't have Sammy, I'm not even sure if I would be here. We had a fire at our house. Um, one night I was sleeping, and it was just like every other night, and that I had gone to bed, everything seemed to be fine. And then a fire started, and Sammy was sleeping with me as usual, and he tried to wake me up, and he couldn't. So he went into my mom and dad's room, and he tried to wake up my dad, and he didn't. He sleeps really soundly. 
And then he went to wake up my mom, and she woke up with the fire alarm. So she ran to come and get me, and she woke up my dad, and we ran outside. If it weren't for Sammy, then who knows if we would have gotten out. The night of the fire, I was sound asleep, and I'm laying there, and all of a sudden I feel Sammy licking me and licking at my neck, which he's never in our bedroom. And I wake up, and all of a sudden I can hear the smoke detectors and the, and the sounds going off, and there's smoke filling the house. And I yell at Bill, not, dial 911, and all of a sudden we were awake and knew what was happening. Yeah, and I dialed 911 immediately, you know. And Donna jumped up and ran to get Kate, and all three of us made it the point of the stairs there and took off down the stairs and out the front door. One of the biggest surprises we had is we didn't even hear the smoke detectors going off, and the house was just totally full of smoke. We could hardly see going down the stairs. So when the fire department arrived, we found out that there was so much smoke in the house, but it was, had originated from a small fire down in the furnace room. But the small fire had made such a large amount of smoke in the house, and that it was so dangerous, and we were... Well, actually, the fire department said that, you know, we could have died in that fire because most people die from smoke inhalation, not the fire itself. There was so much smoke in the house. If Sammy hadn't have woken us up, who knows what would have happened. He was a true hero. Sammy is a hero. He isn't even a pet anymore. He's more like a member of the family. I think, really, that he's just special. How many cats do you know to save their family? And so because of that, he's become one of us. We love him and he loves us.